Hi guys, James here from plumberparts.co.uk. Today we're going to be having a look at de-aeration devices. Uh, we're going to be doing a few videos on these over the next few weeks. This particular one here is pretty much used on gravity fed systems in the UK. They're a very, very common type of system in this country. Uh, but there are other types of way that you can de-aerate a system. We thought we'd start with the basic version first, okay? So we're going to look at this little beast here. Please do subscribe to our videos on YouTube and also follow us on Twitter and Facebook where we have very active accounts as well and you can even follow us on Snapchat. But before we begin, remember, there's one thing y'all gotta do. That's hold tight. Plumberparts.co.uk, home of Find Your Plumber. Cool, so it's brass monkeys out here. I don't know if you can actually see my breath, but it's freezing cold. And being English, I've got a lovely brew on as well, so that's always good. So, we're going to have a quick look at one of these. It's not going to be a very long video because these are really, really simple bits of kit. Uh, we saw one of these a few days ago on a job and I just filmed it quickly on my camera phone. Uh, we'll add that in this video somewhere along the way so you can actually see one of these in situ. But I thought, well, I'll tell you what, they're really, really cheap. Let's go to the suppliers, buy one and show you exactly how they work. So, what these do is basically de-aerate any air out of the system water of a heating system. Now, it's very important to not have any air at all in a heating system, or at least to a complete minimum, because it affects how the heating system runs. You can get air locks, uh, problems with flow, it can upset radiators, pumps, boilers. It's just bad news, okay? So we don't want it in there. So used in conjunction with a decent inhibitor in the heating system, which is gonna stop you from creating air in the first place, we're gonna get one of these as, as well and install that on the system to make sure that any air that's in the heating system can leave it nice and easily. So, let's have a quick look at what this is. So here we go, this is basically our beast here. Now, to show this in, installed in the proper way, uh, what we'll do, we'll draw a little diagram in a minute, but first things I want to show you is how simple these are on the inside. Right, firstly, I don't know if you can see that, but you should easily be able to just see in there, right at the moment, right? So first things first, you can see light through this pipe here, going in. You should be able to see a little bit of light going in there as well. So what we're trying to say is there's no hidden secrets in this particular de device. All this is, is a little tub, like the size of a cup, with a pipe in here, a pipe out there, and a pipe up out of here, okay? So that's it, they're simple. But James, how do they actually de-aerate the system and where do they fit in the system? Well, that's a very, very good question, Tarquin. What these do, let's get the old board out. Ha! <laughs> oh man. This has been on here a while. Oh, nothing that a bit of spit can't fix though. So let's lay our beast on here and we'll draw the system out around it. So this is generally how these work. We're gonna have our flow coming up here from the boiler, right? It's gonna go in here like so, right? Like that, flow coming in here nice and hot. Now this pipe here is our expansion pipe, okay? Now, some people also will tear feed into this, which is a little bit naughty, but there are other versions of this that we're gonna show you in a minute on the actual site that has the feed built into this whole unit. So you have the expansion there, so that's where our air's gonna go in a minute with any luck. And then we have our feed out, and generally what that'll go into is the pump, and then off to whatever you've got, your two port valves or your three port valves, so that's it, okay? So the idea is you've got air, coming up here that we don't want. This is in the moment when you fill the system up. I mean, usually once these have done their job, they just sit there, okay, and just allow for expansion. Now the thing is, it's very difficult for us to get rid of air out of a heating system if it's just rushing through a small pipe, because it's, it's staying at a high speed, really quick, just flying through, uh, and if we've got a vent that's just a T or something like that, say we T a little vent in there, uh, it's not going to have the chance, it's going to rush past and we're going to miss a lot of air and that's going to carry on into the heating system and out of the way. It's not going to expect get upper expansion pipe. So how do we slow that water down without actually slowing it down, if you see what I mean? So what we do, we, we expand the amount of area that that water's in. So, okay, we've got this size here. This is the size of pipe we've got here, just like that. At the moment, that's the size of area, okay? but we introduce it to this large area here. This is a larger area. See it as like a water break that doesn't reduce the flow around the system, okay? So you've got this water break here. The water just sits in here. It has just a few seconds to sort of swirl about and then go off back out. And in those few seconds that it's in there, it can get rid of its air up this pipe here and up to the expansion and out of the way. That's all this is doing here. Uh, it's so, so simple. So we have this air comes in, rushes in. It's kind of slowed down a bit. We get rid of it up here, 
air out of there so our flow can go off here around the system and be completely deaerated. And you notice we put the pump on this side, that's so the pump isn't affected by any air, so it's deaerated water coming in. Um, sometimes you might have an issue with the expansion pipe if the crook's not high enough, uh, it's, not, it's gonna suck a little bit of air down here, but hopefully because of this brake here, that's not gonna happen. You can install the pump here if you like, but to be honest, most companies don't recommend that you do that. So there you go, you now know how one of these little deaeration devices works. Let's just pop over to that little video I did on my mobile phone a few days ago uh, where we actually saw one in situ. Have a look at this. So guys, sorry about lack of film quality within the old phone camera here at the moment on site. Now as you can see, what we've got up here, we've got the boiler mag that's kind of on the flow from the boiler, which isn't really great. But this is the flow up here, if we have a look at that. Uh, and then we've got our expansion pipe just there. So any water, any air coming up here will escape up that expansion pipe up to the tank before it gets to this pump. And we've got the feed pipe back down from the tank just there. So that's exactly what this does. It's, it's kind of a break. But for now, I've got to fill this lot up. My brew is getting cold now. Thanks for that, by the way, Jim, uh, James, me. Thanks, me. <coughs> Mate, I've got a bit of a cough. So now you know what that weird bulbous thing is sitting in your heating system in your airing cupboard, like what's that doing there? What does it do? Do I really need it? If it's there, leave it there, okay? You can get problems with the feeds, right? Where the feed joins into these, you'll know if there's a problem because if you start draining the system down, you'll notice that the ball valve and the F&E tank doesn't drop. And that's one of the most annoying things for a plumber, especially if you think, oh, I'm just gonna go to this quick job and change a radiator for someone. You start draining the system and you don't hear the ball valve start running. You know you've got a blocked feed pipe to the system. Usually it's just blocked up with sludge and poo because the system wasn't inhibited properly. Uh, and then effectively, some guys will try and back blast it out using the cold feed, uh, the actual cold mains from downstairs, like a tap, and then put it on the radiator spigot. Um, but a lot of blokes, to be honest, do the right thing and just cut out the bit of pipe that's blocked and try and stuff a screwdriver and actually get rid of the debris that way. <gasps> Oh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope it's given you a better idea about how these little beasts work, uh, about how you can deaerate the system. There are many other ways of doing it. We're gonna look into um, automatic air vents on pressurized systems as well. I mean, you can have automatic air vents on unvented systems as well. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just when you're near the pump, especially if you put the air vent on the suction side of the pump, you can get problems with the air vent like float dropping and actually sucking air into the heating system. It's quite rare, but it does happen. Uh, so there's a few little different things that can go wrong, uh, it, but it's so important that the system is deaerated properly. So again, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. I hope you've learned a little bit more about how you can deaerate your system. Please do subscribe to this video by clicking on the link that's appearing right now in cards. Thank you all. Uh, and please do follow us on Twitter and Facebook because if you're not, you're missing out on stuff like this. Hello, my name's James from plumberparts.co.uk and I'm here today to ask you to donate just one or two turns or at least a bit of thought to your drain cocks this winter. There are millions of neglected drain cocks throughout the UK and drain cocks like George, John. Also, we've got a lot of new videos coming up. We're gonna be doing videos on how to first fix a heating system and also a hot and cold system through timber frame. Uh, we're gonna be showing you how to lay shower trays, how to install toilets, how to install vanity units, do all the pipe work underneath. We've got a big project on at the moment. And that goes without saying as well, we've got the oil boiler to put in here at the shed for the little office that we've got. Uh, and I think that's gonna be a really good opportunity for us to show you how different types of heating system work. We can just draw it out on the wall uh, and that'll give some of you apprentices a good idea about how S plan and Y plan heating systems work, how they're laid out, why there are certain components where they are in the system, because it's all laid out in the same way mostly throughout the house. And if it's not, then sometimes it's not gonna work properly. Have a great week, guys. If you need any more help, any more information, please comment in the comments section below and have a lovely time. See you soon, guys. Hold tight. Plumberparts.co.uk, home of Find Your Plumber.